a lot of people get hurt doing extreme sports or chasing adrenaline. I never thought I could ever be competitive again in an adrenaline sport, and especially against able-bodied folks. So today, I'm here with my friend Brent, who's gonna introduce me to FPV drone racing. Now I'm all nervous. Heads up, heads up. That definitely broke something. All right, we're out in a field in Houston, Texas, and I'm here with Brent. So since everyone in the comments is going to be asking all the questions, tell us a little about your level of injury and how you got hurt. Uh, yeah, so I uh, broke my back snow skiing when I was 16. I'm a T12 paraplegic. So you were 16 years old when you got hurt, and that's pretty young. I mean, I thought I was young at, at 20. Tell us a little bit about what that was like for you. Yeah, it was a little tough. Um, I mean, obviously, being very active as a kid, you know, um, you've got a lot of goals and ambitions in life that uh, you want to achieve. and. When something like getting a disability happens to you, it's uh, something that kind of slows you down a little bit, you know? So being that I was active, I was always looking for, for an outlet to find some adrenaline. What were some of the, the adaptive sports or clubs or things you had tried like in the beginning? Well, and that's one of the things, like I didn't really start uh, when I first got hurt. I didn't want to do any wheelchair sports uh, because it wasn't like the same. I was such an active, able-bodied person. Like I didn't want to play basketball because it wasn't the same. And it wasn't until I was older, like in my 30s, until I started playing sports and realized like I really cheated myself out on my prime years per se. Uh, uh, of, of playing wheelchair sports. Dude, I relate so hard to that because that was my same situation. I remember I was like 21 years old and then when they, they put me in that basketball wheelchair, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be the best cripple. <laughs> I'm still a f***ing cripple. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want that. And unfortunately, that toxic mentality put me in a bad place for a really long time yeah, and now that I'm out of it and I'm doing all this, I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, like, I did I just waste all that time doing nothing? nothing. Yeah. Whenever you play a, a wheelchair sport you don't have that same level of competitiveness and you know you don't necessarily get the opportunity to have an even playing field with our able-bodied folks how did FPV do that for you what really got me into FPV was uh, I went to there's this place in Texas called Enchanted Rock and uh, I went there and I realized it was not accessible and I was like well I gotta get a drone so I can see this thing and then that kind of cascaded into like oh I want to go faster and I realized they have like race drones and I can go like 100 miles an hour and do flips and all kinds of stuff and then I got one and it's just the biggest rush ever. Without having to like do something physical with your body other than move your fingers, it's the biggest adrenaline rush you can get. Yeah, I've heard of people that have grown too old to race their street bikes competitively anymore, yeah. and they're doing um, FPV drone. Oh racing yeah, that. yeah, it brings a certain type. You, you, you'll see tonight. We got a, a different group of guys. They're all into racing motorcycles, cars, uh, engineers. It's there's a lot of technology involved, so mm -hmm. it's a pretty cool crew that kind of is drawn to this. So, like the coolest thing is, you can fly it around and fly back, like places we can't roll. We can fly this and then fly right back to us. So for everyone out there who isn't a nerd like us, you want to tell them a little bit about what FPV is and what FPV stands for? Yeah, so FPV is a first person view. So basically what it means is there's a camera on the end of this drone and you wear these goggles, put these on your head. So it's got a range of about a mile and a half. Ranges vary depending on like the drone you have and the receiver and stuff like that. But uh, So basically it's the equivalent of being a very fast bird. Very fast bird camera. And the more skilled you become, the more skilled the bird becomes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. it's, it's usually in this world it's not the drone or the equipment that's the limiting factor it's the person that's it's the limiting. pilot it's the pilot's limiting yeah factor, just yeah. things happen really fast so all right so tell me a little bit about how i'm going to be controlling this because i'm not going to lie i'm afraid about crashing that thing <laughs> yeah like so the drone's pretty strong so if you crash it it'll probably be all right um but basically how it works uh you have your throttle here um then you've got uh I this is roll um then you've got kind of like pitch forward back and then left and right these things are very powerful, so uh, safety is, is number one priority. So you always wanna make sure you have a good kill switch. So on this particular one, I've got this switch here armed. Uh, this will arm it, uh, that will kill it. When you flip it over or get stuck in a tree or something like that, there's a mode called turtle mode. So you flip this switch here into that mode arm it uh, and what it does is it gives power to just two motors at a time so it allows the drone to flip over when you're in a chair it's hard if you flip it across or like crash it like halfway across the field or something it's nice to have be able to flip it over and then fly it back to you instead so of having to go all the way over there and pick it up all right dude you ready to get on out of here and uh, go break some props let's go break them let's do it yeah.
So uh, first thing you gotta do is just make sure you got a good video connection to your goggles. Uh, so you gotta plug them in. It takes a second for it to kind of boot up, so it's gonna do its thing. We wanna turn on the controller here. We'll power it up. So one thing you always wanna do now that everything's plugged in, it's transmitting video from here to my goggles. strapping on the virtual reality and just getting real reality glasses. Alright, so first thing we want to do, let's probably pull the goggles up just a second. Just so yeah, make sure I can see that. What you want to do is, this is your arm switch, so you'll flick that up to when turn it, it on. When I'm ready to go, flip that one up. Yep, and then if you want to kill it anytime, just, just kill that. So if it's coming towards us or anything, just wind it out, flick it down. So. Alright, let's see how far I can go. Alright, it's unlocked, yeah? Yep. I heard heads up and I go F and then you go ha ah! and I go kill it. I just killed it. Just the the roll gets out of control, so you just got to make sure you try to keep it level. If it gets too wild, then you start doing like crazy. But now that was that was really good. I'm really impressed for real. I I, 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 I just kept getting it more throttle. That was my problem. Yeah. All right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Turtle mode in. Disarm. Is that up? Is the it, screen it, went black. Did it? And went blurry and said DJI on it. That means I'm. I'm so battery might have come out. Yeah. Transmission image stuff. Yeah, that means I'm. <laughs> shit up. It's <laughs> alright. BRB. I got, I got a little bit more comfortable, like, with what joystick did the actual steering. Yeah. Because it's like the left one isn't just up and down, it's basically throttle. Yeah. So as long as I get the throttle in a, like, a decent place, then I can kind of just start like Cruising doing around. doing this. Yeah. But then it was when I turned it back towards us that I was like, oh. what am I doing? Put it in turtle mode and I'm like, it's off. Oh, it's got some grass in it. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah uh, just disconnect the battery. Disconnect the battery, go. Did I bend something or did I break something? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. the battery that's crooked, yeah. Yeah, just pop the battery out. But, all right, cool, let's fucking run it again. Yeah, we'll send it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Richard, All right. you got this. You it's ready? Now I'm all nervous. Oh, oh it's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> the battery flew out. <laughs> I'm kind of getting there. I'm crashing more than I'd like, but I feel like I'm doing pretty decent. Yeah, that was good. That I was feel good. like I'm kind of doing good. decent. You have to be putting in more than one input each time. Each time, yeah. And for every positive input, you have to e have an equal negative input. Yeah, we'll keep going, man, but you still got good props on here. Good. Yeah, I'm still coming. I think you broke the GoPro just now. <laughs> I, mean, I said I was gonna be breaking shit. I didn't think I was gonna be breaking the expensive <laughs> stuff, and jeez. That it definitely broke something. It maybe have. That's right. That definitely broke something. Is this, you lose signal? Oh yeah. I feel <laughs> guilty now. I feel like a, I broke his GoPro and probably his drone. <laughs> F me, dude. <laughs>
You're good, dude. For real. Like, you I, know what? You I'm, know what I really did, and I'm, I'm now, I'm admitting this. I panicked and kill switched it. Yeah. I panicked. No, I, I saw you do it. I was like, hey, honestly, I've done it a million times. I was, let's go see how bad I ruined his. If I'd be so nice, it's definitely on the asphalt. As long as we don't break the uh, like the, the flight controller and the electronic speed controller, we're good. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, I think it's good. We just broke the battery. It popped it, the battery. It smashed it pretty good right there. Okay. As long as that bit. Oh, it broke the uh, screws out there. The battery's still good. That's still good. No big deal. Uh, we'll have to just change out some plastic piece screws, but that's no big deal. All right, so I've definitely uh, broken this drone enough today. So we're gonna go check out the other location where Brent's gonna show us some real racing. All right, before we take off, you gotta show us how you load your chair into this truck. All right, cool. Well, uh, this is the Silverado Tron. Uh, it's got a lift in the back here. When the vehicle's lowered, it's uh, so I can get in a lot easier. Gravity's the enemy. Uh, let me get this. So this is the controller that controls the lift here. Uh, just up, down, in and out, and then uh, up and down again. Got the slack. Oh, you can see down here it's been well beaten. It's a truck, though. You know, it's doing its job. Trucks, yeah. Whoa. That's how it's done. Yeah, I got a switch right here for the top, up and down, and controls. So uh, we're out here at the night spot, or what we refer to as the night spot, location unknown. We don't want everybody showing up here, so <laughs> uh, we'll just say it's in Houston in a parking lot somewhere. But uh, got a bunch of buddies out tonight. We're gonna fly around, set up some uh, some gates and stuff to fly through. Uh, everybody's got LEDs on their drones, so it look pretty cool. So you guys will be in for a treat. Basketball energies. There we go. There we go. appreciate you, yeah, no man. Um, if people are in Houston and want to get an FPV, how can they get hold of you? Uh, just hit me up on Instagram. That's the best way to do it. Uh, at Brent David Key. Um, we're also on Facebook, the H Quadrant on, on Facebook. So um, check us out on there. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like. And if you want to see some behind the scenes footage and some outtakes, we got a link down on Patreon. You can check out some of those. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>